Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see one of the basic topics to move on. Uh, we will be needing it in the flip flops, counters, registers, and so on. The basic, the basic thing to know first is that what is a clock? All right, so this is a very, very basic thing you need to know about the clock, all right? Now, one thing you will be knowing that a clock is what? It tells you the time, okay? But over here, the clock in the sequential circuits, all right? It is used in what? It is used in the sequential circuits. And what does it do in the sequential circuits? It controls. It is the control signal for the inputs all right the clock is what it is a control signal how is that a control signal so i'll just give you a brief idea in this video and when we move on so you'll be seeing it in a great detail that how is it controlling all right now you know that in sequential circuits you have the the output is again given as a feedback to another input so we can have like this that the output of one circuit is given as an input to other circuit and you have multiple processes going on at the same time so for that for that you need to control the timings of the inputs so this clock does what it controls the timing of the inputs all right it decides the timing of inputs It decides the timing of inputs. All right. Now, also, also about the speed of the, uh, the about the speed of the circuit. All right. It also dis we can vary the speed of the circuit with the help of clock. Vary speed of the the circuit. All right. Vary speed of circuit with the help of this. Clock. And how do we do that? By altering its frequency. By altering its frequency. Okay, decide the time of the input. How do we do? Like a normal, like a normal clock does. It tells you the time. At 9 o'clock I have to take my class. At, at, at the evening, 5 o'clock I have to go for a walk, for a jog. And similarly, I have to record a lecture at some particular time. That is what this clock does at, so at, at a particular time. All right, it handles the input. When is which input is has to be given to which circuit at what time? So this clock is what this is the control signal. And and what is the what is the form of it? All right, so clock is a signal that goes from low to high then from high to low and it repeats so let me write it down clock is nothing but it is just a signal clock is a signal that goes from low to high then from high to low and what? And repeat again. And repeats. Alright, so this is about the clock. So now if you have to draw the, the waveform of it, so this is the waveform. It was low, it went to high. It is back to low, it goes back to high. Low, high, low, high, low, high. Alright, that is how this clock goes all right this is the waveform for the clock signal when it is at this state it is a zero and when it is at this state so it is a one all right now this is the waveform of it the clock signal is a signal with duty cycle of 50 percent what is a duty cycle so i'm just telling you in a moment but you need to know that the duty cycle of this clock pulse is a 50 percent all right and similarly, we uh, uh, you can see that what that the time of 
the low signal is equal to the time of the high signal in the overall signal. If this is varying with respect to time t, so you have what? Time of low is equal to time of high. Which means that the time for which the signal is 0 is equal to the time for which the signal is 1. Alright? And now, now what? If you have to operate the circuit, uh, yeah, this, this point we've already said that we can vary the speed of the circuit by altering its frequency, okay? And the frequency is given by what? You know the frequency is given by 1 over the time period. So if you have to uh, increase, uh, let's say, uh, you want to make the circuit faster, so you have to increase the frequency, or which means in other ways, you have to decrease the, the, the time period, all right? So for a circuit to work faster, you need to increase the frequency, which will automatically be decreasing your time period. So what is the time period of this cycle? This is the time period, okay? Let's say from here to here. Now this is what? This is your time period. And you know what is the time period? It is the time after which the cycle repeats itself, all right? You can also take it from here to here, from here to here, similarly here to here, here to here. That is your choice, you know that, all right? Let's say we take an example, all right? Let's say we take an example, how is this clock working? Let's say I take a sequential circuit, okay? Let's say this is a sequential circuit, or to be particular, let's say this is an SR flip-flop, which we'll be covering in the upcoming few lectures. We have the outputs Q and Q complement, and the inputs to this are S and R. Now we also have to give it the, the clock signal. The control signal is what? It is the clock signal. Okay, now when will this SR operate? This depends on this clock signal. You can say like this, this is an enabled signal, okay? And this SR flip-flop will operate only when the clock signal is high, all right? Will operate only when uh, clock CLK is equal to 1, okay? Similarly, you can design other sequential circuits uh, in which will operate when the clock is going from a low to high state or it is coming from a high to low state that is called edge triggering all right and in this i forgot to tell you that uh, this is what when when the when this is going from low to high state from low to high this is called the leading edge all right so let me draw it over here low to high this is the leading edge leading edge and when it is coming from high to low, which means this one, so 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 what is this? This is the falling edge. This is the falling edge. Okay? And you can design circuits to operate either on this leading edge or operate on this falling edge. And I gave you an example of this SR flip-flop, let's say, which will work only when this clock is high, all right? Which means over here. All right? And a term I, I, I used over here was the duty cycle, all right? So let me define that for you as well. Duty cycle. Uh, so what is duty cycle? It is the time for which the signal is, it is the ratio it is the ratio, <coughs> sorry, for the time for which signal is high. Time for which signal is high and divided by the total time. This is what the duty cycle is. And, and over here, if you see, if the total time uh, is, is this one, let's say, uh, I cannot mention it somewhere over here. Let's say this is the total time let's say small t so and also you see so for half of the time the signal is high all right so for time the signal is high is t by 2 and 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 the total time is t so which means you come up with 1 over 2 and this 1 over 2 indicates that that the signal is high for 50 percent of the time and it's low for 50 percent of the time meaning that this particular signal this clock signal has a duty cycle of 
following. So I believe this is an NF introduction, just an introduction to what the clock is. It is a control signal that controls what, at what state the circuit has to operate, the sequential circuit, all right? In the next video, we see the different triggering methods, all right? So see you over there very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care. Goodbye.